Before we start the episode, I wanted to make it clear that not all AI and deepfake technologies are bad. There are valuable usages to the technology to create useful applications. However, in this episode, let's focus mostly on how AI and deepfakes are negatively impacting those in media and especially audio. There are some reference links in the description that you can have a look at after the episode ends. My name is Anirudh. You're listening to Underscore. Trust is the glue that holds the world together. How do you trust someone? It's the identity of the person and their actions combined together that builds the trust. But in a digitally connected world where meeting or seeing someone face to face is not always possible, how do we confirm the identity of the person we see online? It's one of the most basic requirements of creating and maintaining trust. Deepfake is a video and audio of a person that closely resembles them but is not them. Deepfakes are also about creation of a face with artificial intelligence and machine learning which does not belong to any individual but is made up of features of many faces merged together. To an average onlooker, these faces seem totally natural. These are called hyper-realistic digital forgeries. This has made possible for anyone including you to swap someone's face and voice into a video and make it seem like they said something they in reality did not there are tools available online for free just google about it and you'll be comfortably making deep fakes in a few hours it's dangerously easy public figures have already started facing the impact of deep fakes and if that's the case will deep fakes affect the audio industry too if it's easy to create an artificial video of a human to be used in advertisements and video games, will it be also possible for a machine to create a voice using AI to sing for a song or narrate a story? Will singers have to compete with songs sung by machines? How easy will it be to create a natural voice for text-to-speech? What's the future like for those working in audio space? And finally, is it possible to copyright someone's voice to protect oneself against deep fakes? Listen to this audio. We're entering an era in which our enemies can make it look like anyone is saying anything at any point in time, even if they would never say those things. So, uh, for instance, they could have me say things like, uh, I don't know, uh, Killmonger was right. This is not Barack Obama. You're hearing audio from a deepfake video BuzzFeed uploaded to YouTube in 2018 to educate people about the dangers of it. The voice you hear is of comedian Jordan Peele. As I mentioned earlier, the link to the video is in the description. You can check it out later. Word of a person carries a lot of value in this world. Politicians and women have been the broad target of deepfakes till now. Journalists and news organizations will be fighting a lot more deepfakes and AI-generated fake content in the future. I wanted to get a perspective from a journalist on this. And I spoke to Pratik Sharma, who is a senior journalist. This is the conversation. My name is Pratik Sharma. I'm an audio journalist, a former radio presenter and a TV presenter. I run an audio content company called Motormouth Media. Motormouth Podcasts is our flagship vertical within Motormouth Media. So audio journalist, podcast network, editor-in-chief, and all things audio, basically. Pratik, when was the first time you saw a deepfake? There is a very famous clip of Jack Nicholson from The Shining where they deep faked Jim Carrey's face onto Jack Nicholson and it just felt so real. For one moment, I felt that maybe they have reshot the entire sequence and Jim Carrey has done such a brilliant job at not just imitating Jack Nicholson's expressions and his manner of speaking, but also his voice. And later, when I was told that this was not actually Jim Carrey. This was his face deep faked onto Jack Nicholson's face. It was fascinating, but then it was also scary. Deep fakes and AI are absolutely impressive, but I'm sure they'll be used in the wrong way too. Throughout history, we have so many examples where any new invention which was made with the intention of bettering humankind, a lot of those inventions have actually been misused more than they have been used. Uh, and And in that perspective, when you look at deepfakes in that particular perspective, the, the chances of misusing that technology are way higher 
in my perspective than better uses i'm sure there will be a lot of great uses for that kind of technology especially uh, the, the the video aspect of it there there have to be very very strict sort of checks in place that prevent the spread of misinformation because of this technology have ai or deep fakes made any negative impact on your work fortunately not yet uh, and and as a journalist it's a it's a tricky path to walk uh, especially if if you're an audio journalist then it becomes even more difficult because then your face isn't there and now that technology has grown uh, at such a fast pace i mean if 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 imitating somebody's or or deep faking somebody's face is so easy one would imagine that doing the same thing to audio would not really be difficult one thing i definitely wanted to ask you prateek how are journalists and news organizations fighting against deep fakes and misinformation see misinformation and disinformation is not new various groups organizations political parties have relied on misinformation and disinformation to further propel their agenda whatever serves their purpose at that particular point of time right while the advent of technology and the growth of technology has made life easier and it has you know given us opportunity to uh, consume a lot of information the veracity of that information authenticity of that information uh is also now questionable not everything that you come across on facebook for example or through a whatsapp forward is always correct i'm not saying that every piece of news that you come across is fake but we have been witnessing a lot of concerted effort towards spreading misinformation about xyz subjects especially when elections are around the corner you will always see a spike with these kind of incorrect messages incorrect stories news organizations are spending a lot of effort lot of resources lot of time in cross verifying and cross checking every piece of information that we receive primarily through social media so suddenly you'll see that a particular story or one particular um, information has started being shared a lot on facebook uh, 100000 shares 200000 shares uh so many people have viewed it but is it correct so, th- so you know that th- there are various ways there are tools and you know it's it's a, it's a whole other conversation about how that happens but it takes a lot of time for us and a lot of effort to actually go through what actually happened versus what is being shared the sort of flip side to that is or 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 one sort of negative because of the kind of time that goes into checking every story uh every piece of information is that by the time you get the correct facts incorrect facts or twisted facts have reached so many people opinions have been formed and in some grave uh, circumstances maybe violence has broken out it could lead to any kind of unforeseen uh, situations and it becomes even more important at that point of time to share the the correct story with your with your readers listeners viewers whichever medium it is it's a it's a it's a a really tough uphill battle we do it every day and we know by the time you're done checking say we have 10 uh, stories to cross check today you know abhi uska fact check kiya hai by the time you put them out there's another lot of 10 maybe 20 maybe 50 waiting for you to go through it again you know india as a country elections are happening round the year and every time there is an election there will be a barrage of misinformation and there will be a lot of effort that will go into you know sorting it out so what can the social media channels do about this see a lot of these social media giants have started introducing some kind of tags and they have taken certain steps like for instance if you are on for example twitter and somebody has shared a link to a certain story it may be from a verified source it might be from a credible news organization and it might also be from somebody posing as a either as a journalist or a news organization we are living in a time when certain blogs uh, portray themselves as news organizations and it is uh, quite unfortunate that a lot of people do end up believing the agenda driven posts that they share so what twitter has started doing is you come across a tweet there is a link you read the headlines that is so this is how a, an average news consumer on social media primarily behaves you read the headline and you instantly form an opinion about what the story is 
and what this has given rise to is a a new set of headline writers who will write such compelling headlines to form an opinion even before you have read the story and the most natural instinct at that point of time is to oh this has happened let me share it let me retweet it twitter has put one uh, sort of a check in place where now they give you a sort of a notification that says do you want to read the article first before you share it while it's a it's a great step how many people do actually go and read it because you that is something that you cannot control facebook has started taking certain steps where you know they they will flag certain type of content this is happening more on twitter and i i i see a lot of a lot of action happening on twitter towards battling misinformation effectiveness of those efforts i'm not sure how effective they are because misinformation still finds a way to reach people it's a it's a it's a really difficult sort of battle to fight now this poses a very interesting question prateek some journalists and view artists are known by their voice along with their work of course your thoughts if ai will replace audio journalists and view artists there's a very very strong chance that it will happen uh, in fact there are quite a few services that let you negate the need to hire a professional voice over artist you paste your script you choose the voice that you want you choose the accent and the dialect that you want you choose the pace at which you want that script to be read and in in what mood do you want uh, that script to be read within few minutes you have audio which you can use and now you have removed that human aspect of recording the script in my experience the kind of tools that i have come across so far none of them really sound very human having said that the pace at which technology is developing it won't take long before those tiny sort of issues are also ironed out and then you have such a uh, a brilliantly mimicked artificial voice that it it is difficult for you to differentiate uh, and of course it it poses a huge huge problem for people like us you know uh, and as you as you very rightly mentioned you know so certain journalists become uh, known because of how they speak certain keywords that they use certain phrases that they use the way they present a story which part of the sentence or which 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 part of the phrase do they highlight and how do they do that and and with machine learning and artificial intelligence you know becoming better and better every day it is going to become a problem i hope it doesn't i hope people have that sort of a a sense to to pause for a bit and say that a this is not really sounding like the person that we are used to listening to and even if the voice matches anirudh i feel even if these machine learning tools if if they they match the voice also what they won't be able to match is content is what you say they will be able to to copy your voice maybe 99% they they might be able to capture the tonality and the how your your speech flows but they can't t- tap into your mind so for example ex journalist speaks about a particular topic in a certain way and suddenly you come across an audio that claims that this is the same journalist but is is speaking in a completely different sort of tone and that is something that i feel consumers of news will have to pause for a bit see the temptation to share the temptation to share is always very very strong pratik has said this oh my god he has said such an incendiary thing he has said such a a controversial he's made such a controversial statement let me share it with four people if you take 5 10 seconds put that phone down for a bit think is this how pratik talks is this his regular way of sharing information do i find even 1% deviation from how you know he presents his stories then maybe i'll just pause for a bit and not share it with more people but again uh, how many people will actually take that time out is the question pratik thank you so much for your time thank you thank you for having me and uh, wish you all the best it's obvious that ai is making some amazing progress in content creation space if you think that you will not be impacted by it it's just a matter of time before you are proved wrong experiments with google is a website where projects created using chrome android ai and ar are showcased you'll probably spend a couple of hours having fun in the arts and culture experiment section you should definitely check out the website you'll be amazed if you search by the term music on the website 
These experiments show creative ways in which you can create music by just using your camera or a trackpad or a mouse. These experiments are insight into how ability to create music is shifting from those who have invested thousands of hours learning instruments and practicing vocals to anyone with just a computer or a phone. It won't be long before BTS and Beyonce will face competition from AI musicians and lines of codes that can create songs. There's still time left for these changes to take place. It's definitely not happening tomorrow. But as an audio industry professional, how do you make sure that you are relevant in the times to come? Being updated with the latest tech is crucial. Understanding the impact of tech on your business or profession will become more and more important. While we cannot stop the progress in the field of AI, what we can surely do is to understand and figure out solutions with the aid of this technology. As the complexity of tech increases, it also increases the misuse of original audio and voice. So how do you, as a content creator, protect yourself from being the victim of this tech? Well, you'd be surprised that copywriting voice is not possible. You can definitely copyright a voice recording, but not a voice. AI and deepfakes are going to change the world. You better be ready for it. I hope this podcast brings value to you. And if you like the podcast, if you liked what you heard, do follow the podcast and do leave a rating if you're listening to this on Apple Podcast. Until the next time. 